Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for our second webinar in our 2024 series. If you joined our previous webinars over the years, it's good to see you again. If this is your first time, it's great to have you with us. So we're running these webinars um, roughly every month for the next five months. So keep an eye out on the website and our socials for details of future sessions. And please do let us know if there's any topics that you'd like us to cover. Today, I'm joined by my colleague, Janice. We're both stroke survivors, but with very different issues to face. So we'll talk about the ways that we have found that make getting out and about a little less daunting. And we'll give any personal insights into um, what we have used and how we have used it and how it's helped us. So first of all, some housekeeping. The session is being recorded, uh, but no details of any of you watching are being captured. So the only people that will appear on camera will be myself and Janice. There is a chat function. Um, so please say hello to us and make any general comments you want to to each other. There's a Q&A function as well. Um, at the bottom of your screen, if you have any questions for us, please use this. And can I ask that if you do have questions, use the Q&A and not the chat because we might not pick them up in, in the chat if it gets busy. So we have made a list of the schemes um, we're going to talk about today with contact details for each and any info you might find useful. And we'll email this to you um, when we send you the email to let you know that the recording is up on our YouTube channel to watch. So you'll have, have that to refer to as well. And now I'm delighted to introduce Denise. Hi. Hello, Denise. Right, before we start, um, one of the questions we were asked was about benefits and what benefits you need to access these schemes. Receipt of benefits is not always a requirement. Um, for your information, I don't receive any benefits and I don't have a blue badge. But Janice, what do you Yes, I, Yeah, I do get PIP um, at the, um, just at the lower level. Um, but I have accessed in the past, like Sheila, uh, things just by declaring that I have difficulties doing certain things, whether it's walking or needing access to um, a toilet, for example, um, or can't wait in a queue for a long time uh, without having had that evidence with me. And they have taken what I've said at face value. So... Again, benefits aren't always required, but if we made a list of what's required for each thing, um, we'd have a very long document to send you. So we would encourage you to look them up for you for yourselves. You you know personally what help you might need when you're out and about, so you can you can kind of tailor tailor the list and and chop it down to to looking at what you need. Um, so let's start. So first on the list, we've got the Headway Brain Injury Identity Card. Now, I don't know if you can see that. OK, I think if you push it a little bit closer towards the screen. OK, yeah, that's much better. OK, yeah. now this that's that's one side of it. And I'm going to turn it round and that's the other side of it. So you can see it's got some information on there and what have you. OK, now these are available free of charge from the Headway website. And it's it was started off to help police officers and um, other people to easily identify brain injury survivors and ensure that they got the proper response and support. So each card is personalised and the card holder can um, explain what, you know, problems they might face. And 
it's also got a number on it. Um, I don't know if you saw the telephone number. Let me bring it back again at the bottom there, which mm -hmm. is a 24 hour line um, to criminal legal advice um, or representation from solicitors trained in brain injury. Should you find yourself in a situation where you need some help as well? Um, and the, the other reason for the police getting involved as well with sometimes when people have got a brain injury, it they can maybe present as if they're drunk, but obviously they're not. So again, it's another it's another way of identifying that you have a brain injury. And it's it's a nice little a nice little thing that you can keep in your wallet or your purse or your pocket, back of your phone or what have you, and it's free of charge. So that's the headway card, first of all. Now, we have another similar one, but I'll talk about that later. I'm trying to sort of divide up similar things so you don't get confused. So the next thing we're going to talk about is, I'm sure you've all seen these, the Sunflower Lanyard. Now, this has moved on and um, this became very popular for people in COVID um, who didn't want to wear masks, but they had no reason not to wear masks. <laughs> and where they were all free in supermarkets and things, I, th I think they've they've sort of gone out the door now. But anyway, you can get them. There is a website that's called the Hidden Disability uh, website. Again, as I say, we'll give you all the links to these. And it's, it's just even wearing just this should signify that you've got hidden disability. OK, but they've moved it on that you can purchase different things from the, the Hidden Disability website um, and more countries are taking it on now. Again, there's a guide on the website to what countries do it. Um, I'm going to France this summer, so I tapped into France. Unfortunately, France haven't adopted it yet, but I was able to get this which is in French, and I'm presuming it's telling them that I have a hidden disability. So that was quite handy, and there's there's more French on the back there. And if you don't like wearing lanyards, which I don't, you've got this that you can put on a belt or a bag or what have you. It's got a little, I'm not very good at doing this. That's it. A little, a little clip at the top that you can clip it onto something or they do provide badges as well. I'm going That's to go to, yeah. to the opposite side. OK, yeah. yeah. Now, moving on even further, because hidden disabilities is obviously a lot wider than just us stroke survivors as well. You can get them. Um, for other hidden disabilities, if you've got anybody in your family. Um, I got one for my son recently who has epilepsy, much to his disgust because he doesn't want to carry it. But, but being a mum, it was obviously useful. But I've got these two. OK. And. OK. The, yeah. so they're probably the most applicable to stroke survivors, along with possibly epilepsy. So on the back, I'm going to hold them up. On the back, they have your they have your photo on it, so they know it's genuinely you. And these little symbols here, you can pick from a host of symbols. Again, just to sort of narrow down what what your problems are, um, and we'll give you. We'll we'll give you the symbols on the on the um email as well. But if you go on the website and hover over the symbols, it'll tell you I'll tell you what they are. I can't remember what they all are now because <laughs> they're not obvious and stroke survivors, isn't it? <laughs> but it's it's a good thing to have. I found um last year I was um flying back to Scotland. And I was just looking at the Luton Airport website, um, mainly to see what's happening with security now, because it usually takes hours. And lo and behold, I found that if you have a sunflower lanyard, 
then you and your immediate family can go through fast track security, which you, you normally have to pay for. So I just rocked up to fast uh, track security, had this around my neck and got flagged through. Um, so it's always worth checking. All the airports seem to have different things and it's not always easy to find the information because I knew that information about the Sunflower Lanyard and fast track security was there. But when I went back to find it for the purposes of today, it did take me a little while. Um, but what I also found was information about quiet areas that you could go and um, sit in um, once you got through to departures and everything. So that was quite useful. Um, so again, if you can't find it on an airport website, ring them up or email them or contact them because it is it is there some somewhere. And yeah, I think they usually advise two days before you fly, don't they? Just to um if you're gonna book yes, yes, um, any assistance. Yeah. yeah, and that's with the airlines as well as the airports, but we'll we'll go on to to that in a in a minute when we're talking about that's in that's in the travel right. section. <laughs> but that was just a snippet of what I've I've used that for. Have have you used your Yes, I, I was gonna say um I've used it at home. Um for instance, I found it super useful when we've been visiting an attraction, um, just wearing it and walking up to um the barrier to get in. Quite often pe the people will notice that you've got your your yellow your your sunflower lanyard and as Sheila said at the airport they just send you through a quicker queue so you're not standing in a queue I've even uh, when we went to London into the we wanted to just see the um we went into the tower but we really just wanted to see the crown jewels and um, my husband just went up to one of the beef eaters and said um, my wife has difficulty uh, waiting in queues and he saw my lanyard and just straight away just took us, a bit embarrassing, but he just took us straight to the uh, front of the queue and passed us on to another one of the the employees. And um, so they couldn't have been more helpful. And um, yeah, uh, at an airport like Sheila, um, we didn't, I hadn't booked assistance, which we're going to go on to, to talk about, but we all um, just turned up at the, you know, you have to self-check in now and put your way, um, weigh your own suitcase and put it on the belt. When they saw that I had a lanyard, um, just one of their, their employees just came straight over and offered me assistance. So that was with, without even booking anything. So... Yeah, I've had good experience with the with the lanyard. And that's exactly how it should work. Someone coming over and offering um to help you. Um and you don't have to explain yourself because it's it's all in the lanyard that you have a, a hidden disability and you, you may need help and what have you. Right, on to the next one. Stroke Association have a card as well. This, again, is free of charge. So it's just a basic card to let everybody know. Again, you can just show it. You don't have to speak. You don't have to explain. On the other side, there's a bit for your details and an emergency contact as well. And as I say, you can just go onto their, their website, put in your details, and there you go. You can get that as well. So it's it's all always handy to have something, especially if you're like me and you just go to speak and you can't. <laughs> it's in your head, but you can't get it out your mouth. Um, right, now on to the next one. Now... This is maybe more applicable to some more than others, but I've gone with this because a lot of people do tend to travel down to, to London on holiday or for a weekend or what have you. So it might be applicable as them. So 
transport for London. So if I say TFL, that's what I mean, transport for London, have got this uh, scheme. So it's, it's please offer me a seat. So I think they've had it in the past where you could get badges if you're pregnant and things like that. This is a, a card for your wallet again. So if you don't want to go around wearing this badge, you could have that in your wallet and show it. And um, you're not guaranteed a seat, but you might guilt trip some people into giving you a seat because I've been on the tube myself and, you know, if any elderly person gets on and the, and the youngster's sitting in the seat and not bothering to get up for them, which drives me up the wall, but that's just the way we've all been brought up. Um, yeah, so and I'm just thinking, especially that if you are young, obviously, you know, me and Sheila are knocking on a bit now, but if you are a lot younger and you are sat in a a seat and you appear, you know, you're not going to get think you're less likely to get challenged if you if you feel a bit awkward. So I think having these obvious signs, um, yeah, they're great. Exactly, and I think for the younger ones who don't like wearing the lanyard, you know, something like that, the small sunflower and everything that, you know, the, you won't get challenged, hopefully. Um, so transport in London is, there's quite a lot um, that you can get from Transport for London themselves. You might have to go on to their website. So you've got, for example, Step Free Tube, a tube guide. So that might be useful for some, comes in two sizes. Things like uh, toilet facilities, where the, all the toilets are. So it's a big, a, a big document, unfortunately, with a nicely colored map of the tube on the back. Um, you can you can get all kinds of, um, you know, guides to whatever. These these badges that I showed you are available to people in Greater London and the East of England. Now, I tried to pin them down to what do they mean by the East of England? And um, because we in Milton Keynes can sometimes, sometimes we can be East of England, sometimes we're South Midlands, what have you. Um, but they sent me this with a, an MK postcode. So I challenged them and sort of said, well, if you're from, say, York and you're coming to visit London and you would like one of these badges and they say if you get in touch with them, they'll send you one out or you can pick one up when you get down to London um, from one of the visitor centres. So all that information will be on this this um, email that we'll send out to you as well. Um, so you can go and pick one up. Mm -hmm. Um, and also as well, lots of the the information um, about getting around London and like the step free guides and what have you, that will all be all be on the email as well. Things like um, again, this is in London, um, taxis and mini cab travel. If you've got mobility impairment, you may be able to get subsidized taxis and things. But again, you've got to sign up for that. Um, but we'll put the email in there for you. London residents um, get a freedom pass if you're over the age of 66 or you have an eligible disability. Um, again, we'll give you the email so you can look up and get the information for yourself. Um, so lots of lots of other things that leads on to national travel. Um, I found lots of different railways uh, providers that all offer free priority seat badges or cards. Um, and we've got a list of the railways that you could contact. So I think it's just basically, if you know you're going on a journey and you're going on, I don't know, 
West Midlands Railway or whatever they're called now because they all keep changing their names. <laughs> you know, get in touch with the railway, find out what they've got for you. I mean, there's always assistance um, at train stations, airports, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but if you don't need to, to go to that extent, you know, it's worth getting in touch with them and finding out um don't forget you've got things like the um disabled persons rail card as well for um national rail as well the bus companies do things like the disabled persons rail card um and again you know each ev everything that we're talking about as i say has got different um different eligibility I said that um um criteria so always look it up because you just never know um i found this as well from some of the the bus companies that's from stagecoach now this is just printed out at home on a bit of paper so you can have it with you um they're obviously saving money, not sending things out. This one here is from National Express, and there's all kinds of different cards that you can choose from. I don't know if you can oh, yeah. see some of them on there. It's a double-sided as well. So you can pick out what you need for yourself to make to make life a lot easier. And again. You know, just just check on the websites um, under accessibility, under, I don't know, every website is different. Um, some are easier, some are harder. Um, there's uh, also, going back to the London aspect, if you need um, maps in different languages as well, there's different accessibility guides there as well. So, you know, make make the most of what you can what you can find. Um, and going back to the airports, um, special assistance at an airport. So you can get help in the airport. And, you know, what we we just said about skipping queues and things like that. You can also book special assistance that Janice was talking about with the airline, um, but you have to do it in advance. Um, now, one thing I've looked up said you can possibly choose your seat on the plane for free because um, some airlines have started charging now. But again, I think it would depend on why you need the seat and what have you, whether you get it free. Some airlines do it, some airlines don't. Um, and don't think assistance <clears throat> is just for people with mobility issues um, because I've struck, spoken to stroke survivors who've um, got hidden disabilities and also used assistance in an airport and said, um, it's made a huge difference because of, you know, a long flight and their fatigue and sensory overload, like I mentioned about quiet areas to sit in and things like that. Um, so, again, always, yeah, always being able to be nearer, nearer the toilet, for yeah, instance. Exactly. If you're unstable. Yeah. This... Yeah. That might be a reason for you you know, choosing your your own seat for free, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but again, you'll just have to go with what your specific airline airline does as well. And something we found out very recently, um, one of our local um, stroke survivors and his wife found out that um, where they tried to go on holiday and airlines kept insisting that they could only take one battery for a mobile scooter. They found out that you can actually take two and the airlines are all obliged to let you take two. So always push. Uh, if you need any more information on that, come to us in the office and we'll we'll tell you where you can find find out because it's always worth Taking two, two is better than one. 
and what have you. Um, and again, you know, assistance at the airport, at train stations and everything. Um, you know, it's it, train stations, I think, are a pain with all their stairs and everything. And sometimes I don't think their lifts are working and everything. So again, just just ask, just, you know, don't be frightened to, to ask. Autism hour, okay. Some of us might have autism, some of us not, but this struck a chord with me in particular. I don't know, some of you might have heard of this, um, specifically in supermarkets, that's where it's brought to my attention. Supermarkets were starting um, doing autism hour or autism afternoon or morning and what have you, say on a Thursday afternoon and what have you. And it's basically where all the um, things that could, could, cause problems to autistic people or us that suffer from sensory overload so the lights are dimmed there's there's not that annoying supermarket music or all the announcements and everything um you know it's just a lot quieter and calmer and everything um so you know make make use of those um, they also the reason I've brought it up today is um, cinemas and theatres are sort of taking this on board as well. Um, cinemas offer autism friendly screenings. So the cinemas I've found so far are Cine World, Every Man, Audion, Picture House, Showcase and View. Um, so Odeon says it keeps lights on at low level, sounds are lower than usual, and there's no trailers or adverts, and guests are allowed to move around and make a noise as well. Um, so that's maybe more for the, the autism, but the no trailers and, and sound levels lower sounds heaven to me. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the same thing with the, the theatre as well. Um We'll talk a bit more about the um, accessibility at the theatre. Um, but I applied for accessibility um, very recently at my local theatre. And one of the questions I was asked was, would I like the, um, I can't think what they call them, the, the, the quieter performances and what have you. Um, so I ticked. I take that one. So the the I mean the 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 show doesn't change, but things like the house lights are are lower and strobe lighting if it's in the show might not be on. And um again the audience are free to come and go and you can move and there's staff to help you if you need anything. Um it's like, usually somebody signing as well for people yeah. that are hard yeah. of hearing. Yeah, and loud yeah. noises, explosions, that kind of thing are all, you know, it all all geared up for for, <laughs> for people like me that can't cope with these things. Um so again that well, as I say, we'll go into theatre accessibility in a minute. Um so um in in keeping with us talking about cinemas, I'm gonna hand over to you, Janice to talk about the C A I knew I'd get that wrong. <laughs> C E A cinema card. Yeah. <laughs> well this is what it looks like. You see that's a very old photograph of me. I think I was 50 in that photograph. Um these cost six pounds a year and um you just go onto their website. Again, it will be in the um, information that Sheila's going to. I'm I'm doing what you're doing now. Uh, it will be in the information that Sheila is going to send out, and um, uh, it's quite straightforward. They do need your details, obviously, and if you have got um, this, if you have got a award from um, PIP, 
then it seems to be a little bit more straightforward. But um, uh, if you don't have an award, then uh, you just maybe need to explain a bit more what it is, why you need uh, a, a companion to go with you to the theatre or to the cinema. So this is to allow you to take an essential companion with you for free. So, for instance, I've Cineworld is the nearest cinema to me. So, um, and I and I go quite a lot. So I've actually joined and I pay the I think it's eighteen or nineteen pounds a month, so that I go um, to the cinema. And when I book online or in the cinema itself, um, my companion gets in for free just by showing that card. So it's um I feel like it's buy one get one free because I never I never go to the cinema on my own. So um it, it just means my husband or daughter gets in gets in for nothing. And um they re they remind you when it's coming to an end and you just reapply. Um if you've got PIP then again it's straightforward they just want that as evidence but otherwise you just have to inform them as to why you need um, a companion with you when you go to the theatre or cinema. And obviously a lot of what we're talking about is England based as well um, unfortunately that's just where where we can get the information from um, but I'm sure if you're living in Northern Ireland, Scotland, Wales, you can find out similar information um, and, and schemes and things. Um, I have got some information about um, going to the theatre in Wales uh, where you can get um, free tickets for personal assistants or caterers. So again, that will be on the email for those of you that might need need that as well and I've just seen that somebody's put in the chat they're asking about where you get the sunflower lanyard from so the sunflower lanyard or the anything with the sunflower on it um, you can get from the hidden disabilities website sometimes you can find the lanyards free of charge I think on the website you pay about £4.50 plus postage and packing, but sometimes you find these for free in lots of big shopping centres, supermarkets and what have you. Um, I was I, I ended up having to buy mine. It, I, was, I tried Marks and Spencers and Sainsbury's and yeah. boots and things, but I, I must have just been too late. Yeah, um, as I say, I so, think a lot of them disappeared out the door in COVID yeah. times and what have you. Um, but well, definitely, definitely well worth getting. But another thing that um, Janice and I have found that's worth getting is the Nimbus Access Card. So that's it there. Now you'll see, again, it's got my my mug on it. Uh, and yeah, the mine's bottom, a bit different. <laughs> Down the bottom, and you can see on Janice's as well, there's some symbols. And Janice has got more symbols than me. So let's go back to the beginning. Um, when I applied for this, this, this card costs £15, but it's valid for three years. What you do is you customise this. So you have to provide evidence of your disability. So again, it, depending on what you've got that you can supply to them. All I sent um, for my evidence was my discharge letter after I'd had a stroke from the hospital and they accepted that. Um, and then you you go on to, again, it's like the, the sunflower lanyards. You've got um, a whole load of symbols that you can choose from. Um, so you've got things like, standing and queuing which is what the the three people is um mm. so i just said to them you know i can't queue for a long time sensory overload things like that and what have you um yeah. 
So I think mine's got the plus one to yeah, say that it's you, ideal for me to have a companion with me yeah. and uh, ideally a seat near the end of the aisle so I can get to the toilet quicker. And um, th that's, you know, and the amount of walking that I am able to do. That's it. And it's, again, you know, you can tailor make it to yourself and whether you need um, level access or whether you can cope with steps or what have you. And um, again, you know, you can tie this up, whether you're walking or in a wheelchair or what have you. Um, I think assistant do assistance dogs are, are on there as well. Um, whether you've got visual impairments, audible impairments or... They've, they've even got one for miscellaneous, but you'd, ha you'd have to talk to them about the, the miscellaneous side of things. And again, if it's not wrapped up benefit wise, you might need a letter from a medical professional or what have you. But it's it's very easy to do. Um, it's recognised in quite a few countries. Uh, there's a Facebook group. Um about it and quite often you see somebody saying oh I went to Greece and I used it here and I used it there and what have you so that's quite helpful if you're going abroad um, and again because it's not written it's symbols then they can just look at it they don't need to you know be able to speak English or read English and what have you the reason I got mine was Again, because I don't have any benefits, um, I wanted a priority pass for Disneyland Paris um, to avoid the queuing. Um, and this is all I needed. So you, for example, you apply with Disney 30 days before you go for the priority pass. You say you've got an access card and they put it through when you get to France, um, you just have to provide your access card. So you've got your proof. And again, it's got your picture on it so they can see it's you and you're not pulling a fast one. And they know that you've proved your disability to get this card. That's the important thing. You've already proved it. Um, with the sunflower one, you don't have to send anything to prove that you've got but this this card you do um so so this card show your passport so the, the photos match up and you know you you get one of these little magic things to uh, make you skip the cues and what have you so again most of the time um it's an unless you're in a wheelchair and depending on the rides and the cues you just go down a fast track entrance and everything so you've just got to flash that quickly people see it and and off you off you go um so it's it's definitely worth it and this leads to um again accessibility at different venues so for theatres things like that as I said I've just signed up for my local theatre um and said I had an access card and what have you, that was enough. Um, I've been to um, a concert and everything where the queues are big and I just flashed this and again got to go in the disability entrance and what have you. So it's it's definitely worth having. Have, have you used yeah. it anywhere? Um, like you, I, I use it at I use it at the I've used it at the theatre. Um sometimes um I have used it when we've been to um a theme park. Um and, and like you said, getting the fast track, um, where did we go? Alton Towers. So my daughter was incredibly pleased with me that I could get her to the front of the queue. Um and there wasn't quite so much waiting about. And um, I've also, I think I've, well, I think that's probably it really, because I, I have a, oh, sorry, yes, I, I am a member of the National Trust, and I know you're going to 
going to go on and talk about this, but I'm a, a, a member of the National Trust. And again, I never go on my own. I always go with my husband, but I usually wear my sunflower lanyard and I have my access card on show so that my husband gets in for free as my essential companion. Excellent. It's definitely worth having us say it's £15, but it lasts for three years and it's always helpful to have. Um, another thing I used it for was an exhibition in London as well, even though we booked a, a time slot to go in when we got there the queue was horrendous absolutely horrendous and I thought if I have to wait in that queue with all the people chatting around me by the time I get in to see the exhibition my head's just gonna have gone so I just I had this in my bag luckily just got it out showed it to the guy on the gate and much to everyone's disgust bypassed the queue with the with the family um so it's de and as I say if you if you signed up to the Facebook group or they've got a very um good website as well with lots of information on it, um, you know that's good as well. I don't think you can ever have too many of these these things. Yeah. Um, another thing um that's convenient to have, and hopefully you'll be able to see this because it's on my phone because the least number of cards I can have, the better. So it's just can't wait. It's from the bladder and bowel um, people. So it's it's um, something that you can flash and it's supposed to get you, um, you know, make people realise that, you know, you need to go to the toilet quickly rather than later. So again, it's a kind of cue thing and what have you doesn't guarantee anything but it just lets people know and again you know nobody over here to having the conversation you can just show this to them um and uh another useful thing to have for the toilets is one of these a radar yeah. key i don't know why mine's different to sheila's but it's <laughs> got the pretty Blue plastic, it's just blue all over, but it's exactly, it's identical. Yeah, but it's always handy to have because some places still do have lock disabled toilets. And for us women, there's always a queue <laughs> wherever you go. Yeah. There's always a long queue for the toilets. Um, so that's that's handy to have as well. I mean, I, I went to something up our local city centre. It was an out, outside, it, it was a Formula One thing outside because we have a Formula One team in Milton Keynes. And I thought, oh, it's a cold day. I'm going to go to the toilet before I go out. And I kind of needed, we're walking through the shopping centre and the toilets that I thought were in the shopping centre had completely closed down and they were replaced with just disabled toilets which you could only open with a key and I didn't have my key. Luckily for me, there was a cleaner and I said, oh, can I just go in? And she said, no, 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 you need a key. I said, oh, I don't have a key. So luckily I had this on my phone. So I was able to whip it out and she she let me use the disabled toilets as well. And I think that that's, it's a good way to sort of show people that, you know, what? again, it's 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 a, maybe more a female thing you're in a big long queue for the toilets you're quite happily waiting there and then people that don't need to are just going in the disabled toilet because they they can or you're assuming they can and you know they just can't be bothered waiting and what have you but you've got evidence you know in this card you you can get it in card form as well if you prefer a card you've got evidence that you know You've got every right to go in there and use the use the toilet as well. <laughs> um, the other thing we can go on to the next, and Janice is more of an expert in this than I am. Um, so I might hand over again to you, Janice, is the blue badge for your car. Right. Now, I haven't got my blue badge to show you because it's in my car. Um, but uh, yes, I've had a blue badge. Well, my stroke's 24 
and a bit years. So I've probably had a blue badge 24 years now. And um, you get it from um, your local council. They they all have a different um, method of, uh, not method, but they all have their own, each council has their own blue badge department, as I found out last week, because I applied for a blue badge for one of my brothers who's quite elderly. And um, I was surprised that he didn't have a blue badge. The form that you fill in is quite um, extensive. You do need to gather quite a lot of information. They they want to know that you are a resident of their council. So um, you need proof of who you are. So if you've got a passport, even I found out even an expired passport, as long as it's not more than five years um, expired, they'll accept that or a driving license. Um, they're like a utility bill to prove that you do live where you say you live with your name and address on it. And there is a fee. It's ten pounds, which lasts for um, ten uh, for three years, and they want a passport style photograph that they can check along, uh, which will be put onto your onto your blue badge. I think if you have a, an award like PIP, then it's much it's a much simpler. Um, um, passage through the through the red tape, if you will, because you've already been, you know, you've already got evidence that you have got a hidden disability. But my brother, he hasn't got any um, uh, Department of Work uh, awards at all. So, like Sheila was mentioning earlier, I had his discharge letter from um, hospital. I had a copy of his prescription and I said that I was his representative and that I knew that he could not walk a certain distance without being, in his case, grossly out of breath. So it's just um, a longer process, I guess, if you haven't got a, a Department of Work and Pensions award, but it is still possible. And sometimes... Um, uh, like for instance in my case in the early days I was asked to go in and I was um, seen and they asked me questions um, but since then maybe it's because I just keep asking for a new card and I still have my PIP award I don't have to go in and be assessed um, I'm hoping that's going to be the case for my elderly brother, but just be aware that they may ask, if you haven't got a PIP award, they may ask you to go and um, prove your difficulty. Um, a bit like if you're applying for, for PIP or ESA in the first place, I guess. So, um, but they are, um, in my case, I find it really hard to get out of a car unless the door is as wide open as it could possibly be. So um, I think just being able to tell them what difficulties you have and how your disability affects you, because it could be you know, completely different from somebody else. Um, so just the bigger car parking space has always been a, you know, a massive bonus to me. And it also leads the way to other things yes yeah uh, so yes do you want me to go on uh, um for, for i mean you you're not guaranteed free parking sometimes you get a disabled space but some um councils will still charge you for parking so it's always worth checking the boards to see if it is free for a disabled driver I found particularly um, seaside resorts or um, uh, cities quite often still want you to pay, um, even though you have got a blue badge. Some places, for instance, our local hospital in Northampton, you can park for free with your blue badge, but they want you to register your car. Same at the train station in Milton Keynes and Northampton, for instance. I can park my car for free with my blue badge, 
but I've had to register my car's registration number because uh, I had quite a surprise because for years I've been leaving my car at Milton Keynes, trotting off to London for a couple of days, coming back, driving home. Um, I did it last year um, to be sent a, a parking fine. I argued the toss and um, got didn't have to pay the fine, but it, it's just something to be aware of that sometimes you do still have to register your car, but you don't have to pay. Um, it's as Janice said, you have to apply through your your local council. So as we know, all you know, some local councils are better than others. Uh, so you might have more of a fight or less than, than a fight. Um, I think it's a, a similar way to apply um, through the government.uk um, uh, website for England, Scotland and Wales. But I'm led to believe there's a different way to apply if you're in Northern Ireland. But again, we'll give you those, inf those information and, and links to sign up. Um, blue badge costs up to £10 in England. Twenty okay. pound in Scotland, but it's free in Wales. So that just shows all the differences between the, the parts of the country. Um, and again, there may be more benefits. It depends if your vehicle is registered as a disabled vehicle on its V five C document, or again, you receive certain benefits where the mobility component is is there um but you might be able to get on toll roads uh free of charge um or concessions and what have you again you might have to get on the toll roads free of charge you might have to apply for a pass which may cost seven pounds but again it all depends on on how your your car is registered. So that's another thing to to check out. Um, and again, we'll give you some links to hopefully try and get you in the right direction, even if it's not the right one. Um, as a blue badge holder, again in London, you don't have to pay the congestion charge. Um, and I think as well, um, you have to pay. A registration fee to get the 100% discount. I think the registration fee is about £10. Um, and you can also get in the ULEZ, which is the ultra low emission zones, free in some of the cities around the UK, not just London. I know Birmingham's got it as well. Um, if your class, your car is classed with the DVLA is disabled. But again, all these um things will be on the the email because it's all all very complicated. They don't like to make anything easy. Um, considering we all got brain injuries. <laughs> um, so moving on to another card that you pay for. Uh, this is the National Disability. ID card but what I like about this was when I purchased it I could also purchase this so actually it says it whereas the the sunflower lanyard you've got to know what the sunflower stands for this is actually saying it um again I got that card through just um sending them a copy of my discharge letter um, there was a question um, asking about discharge letter um, because um, their stroke was two and a half years ago. When I applied last year, um, my discharge letter was five years old. So I would say yes. Um, it's worth a try anyway, isn't it? Yes. It's definitely worth a try. You've got to pay up front, but if it doesn't go through, it gets refunded to you. So I'm just going to hold up these these bits of paper um, because not only do you get the disabled card, this blue one here, you can also apply for a carer's card to show that you're a carer. So again, if you... It, 
um I don't know, say you were going to the cinema with the cinema card and you were getting funny looks because um, you're in your 20s and you just say, oh, they're pulling a fast one and there's nothing wrong with them and what have you. This proves that that you're a carer kind of thing or a companion. So it's it's maybe worth having. Um, and if you get the two cards in conjunction with one another, um, you get a slight dis a slight discount and what have you um so far it seems very similar to the nimbus access card that we showed you earlier um this doesn't have any symbols on it it just is saying that you're disabled so by flashing this you're saying again because you've had to prove that you're disabled it's just back up to say that you're disabled um so again you might not need both cards um again you can use this for disneyland paris so you know you i think i think you've got to just work out what's what's best for for you and your situation and what have you um it was a family that started it because their daughter had um cystic fibrosis and, you know, they they found out that, you know, a lot of people, again, it's the hidden disability thing, you know, proving that, you know, there was a hidden disability and that they were carers and what have you. So they brought this out. But it's very like the, the Nimbus one. But again, you know, it's personalised so they can see it's you and you're not pulling a fast one. Um, and that was very quick and easy to apply for. Um, I think Janice did it while we were sitting at a yes, yeah. <laughs> <Sure. laughs> yeah, and it came within it came within about two or three days. It came through really quick. Yeah, um, I just happened to have a scan of my uh, um, PIP award on my phone, so I just attached that and a photograph and paid the money and it it came through but having said that though Sheila I, I have found that as time's gone on um for instance we went to London and went into um Westminster Cathedral mm -hmm. and I just went up to the desk where you pay uh and um asked for a ticket and just said do is there any discount for access users and they just said, oh, yes. And I, so I started rummaging in my bag to get my um, national disability card out. And she said, no, that's not necessary. We just take you at face value. So it's always worth asking. And, uh, yeah, I just smiled sweetly. And um, in I went with my husband <laughs> at, at the discount price. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's why I like this because you know if I rock up somewhere, you know I I don't look like I've I've got any needs kind of thing. So, and I hate explaining things and what have you. And I wouldn't ask. Yeah. I'm one of them. I wouldn't ask because I'd have to explain myself and what have you. By having this, by having this card or the access card, people shouldn't ask you and don't need to. Yeah. No, she didn't ask me what was wrong with me. I just said, "Have have is there a discount for an access <laughs> user?" And in I went. <laughs> Excellent. Well, yeah, thank you like very say, much. Paid the discount price. Yeah, it's always yeah. always worth asking, isn't it? You know, it's it's definitely always worth oh. asking. I didn't know if I was going to um, be able to use. Um, anything to get the accessibility in the theatre, but they accepted the access card. Um, so again, you know, I didn't have to go through and explain anything, um, which was which was brilliant. And um, so I've yet to work out how to how to <laughs> use it to get tickets, but that'll be another thing. There's always something. Um, so I was going to move on <laughs> with that. Uh, Janice and the National Trust, but Janice seems to have frozen at the moment. Um, so I'll just carry on. Um, there's lots of different um, 
like the National Trust, there's lots of uh, theme parks around the country. Everywhere seems to have their own disability, accessibility, what have you, um, or some of them call it, uh, the National Trust is called um, Essential Companion Card or Links Pass and what have you. They're all called different things. So Janice is back with us now. Yeah, you disappeared for a while, Sheila. I don't know where you went. Did I go as well? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I just started on the no, next because we've been stuff. gassing for too long because we've been <laughs> an hour now. So I'll let you explain about your National Trust card. Yes, I, I just joined the National Trust online um, just as a regular member. And... I, th I think I chose to pay a monthly fee. So it's something like £7.50 a month. Um, um, and then um, once I was a member, I could go back in with my membership number and tell them that I needed an essential carer. Uh, at one point, they used to provide an essential carer card, um, but now they just send you um, a letter saying that you need an essential carer but basically on the letter it just said that I was just to tell the people at the gate that whoever was with me is my carer and we have never had anybody challenges we just go in on my card it's very simple like that it's it's still insisting on their website that you need to get the card but hey we'll, we'll go with yeah. that one um yeah. It's it's maybe because you joined up in ad, in advance um, that, you know, you could just say you've got a carer with yeah. you. The National Trust um, membership as well can be used with English heritage sites um, and also um, historical Scotland sites, um, Cadu, which is in Wales, and Manx National Heritage, which is on the Isle of Man. Um, that's the only ones I could find. But again, if you're planning on visiting somewhere, ring them up or email them in advance and say, I'm a National Trust member. Can I get in free or what do I need to do or what have you? And vice versa, maybe if you join the English Heritage, it might work National Trust. Always, like Janice says, always ask. Um, yeah, quite often on their website, if you just look for that short word access it'll yeah. send you somewhere where you can get lots of information well that's it some sometimes you you go on that and they're telling you how their paths are fantastic for wheelchairs and what have you um but you have to delve in a little bit more but keep delving and the information will be there um and where you can get a lot more information as well about about um any any of the things we've talked about is on the Scope website. Scope is a disability charity um, with lots and lots of useful information on it. So go on their website and see what you can find as well. Um, for, I would say, any days out you're having, anywhere you're going to visit, anywhere you're going on holiday in this country, it's worth looking it up and you know, if you've got the access card and you're going abroad, look on the website and um, because I think they have a bit where people can can report where they've been and where they've used it or go on to Facebook yeah. and, and use the um site as well. But if you find any any little gems that we we could all share with one another and use, please do let us know um, because we can add it onto this list um because we could I think, like talking about facebook i've just recent even though i'm not in a wheelchair my mobility isn't great so i've just joined this um site on facebook um and i think it's great because even because even though they're talking about wheelchair accessibility i think with reduced mobility mm. um it's it's so many useful sites where you can go on holiday, how, you know, like you, Sheila was saying, easy access to the toilets, um, you know, how do you get in 
or lots and lots of simple questions that you just want to answer quickly. I found really, really good on that uh, Facebook page. And it's knowing about them makes you relax more so it's not stressful going somewhere and things, you know. If you know you're going on the train, if they got toilets at that station, if they got this, if they got that, if they got help, if they got lifts and what have you. So, you know, it is it is worth doing a bit of homework just to make. And then you can go out and enjoy your day out because you know X, Y and Z, whatever X, Y and Z is for you. It's different for everybody, um, you know, can can help. And, you know, our Facebook group is where you pick up little hints and tips and what have you um, for all kinds of things. And, you know, there's, you know, there's a lot of useful information on, on the Internet, but it's the little bits like sensory overload. If I go somewhere um, where there's a lot of noise, all you can hear is the background noise. You can't hear what the person next to you is saying and what have you. So, you know, um, lots of people have talked about the, the loop earplugs and things like that and what have you. And, you know, they do different ones that you can have conversations or block yeah. out noise. It's like a lot of people. Um, and local knowledge as well. It's, it's that's it. Good. That's it. Yeah. Um, it's just bouncing, bouncing off one another and sharing the information. I noticed that somebody in the chat had mentioned about the sunflower for your car. You can get it. This is a magnet or you can get a sticker as well. So it alerts, you know, if you need the emergency services, it alerts them to somebody having hidden disabilities and everything as i say once once you get on these websites um you can be on them for ages looking at all the different things and help um but unfortunately you seem to have to go looking so that's what we were trying to do today was you know give you a bit of an insight into things to look for and what have you because you know what it's like the internet one thing leads to another thing um, and what have you. And it's it's knowing about them all. I'm just looking at the questions that have come in today. My blue badge will run out. Will it be simple to re-get the next one? I think the simplicity... I have, yeah. Go on. Sorry, I, I find that um, since I... Because I'm only... I, I found my initial application was long-winded and they wanted to see me in person. Um, and then after that, I've always just renewed. Even when I've moved house, I've moved councils. I've just renewed. And because I'm in receipt of um, PIP, I send them the first page of my PIP award. And um, it's just been very straightforward. Yeah, all I was going to say was it probably be down to your local council. How yeah, easy I've, mo I've moved they three make things. Yeah, I've been to three different councils now, and it's it it is it it has been much easier after that initial um, long winded form that you have to fill out. Yeah, well, that's reassuring. It's like you shouldn't have to keep proving anything, should you? We've heard yeah. that one before. Um, well, thank you very much for joining us today. And if you've got any questions, um you would have had my email um, address on any emails you got about today, or you can email into info at differentstrokes.co.uk and just say you want to ask Janice or I a question um, and we'd be happy to get back to you or wait for the email with all the information on it. Still, if you've got any questions, always come back to us. Um, at the end of the session, um, there'll be a very, very, very short survey. It's just a couple of questions. Won't take you more than a minute to do. So we'd be really grateful to get your feedback on that. If you could do that for us, please. And the next webinar will be on Thursday, June the 27th. And it pr be primarily for those who are unpaid carers for stroke survivors and loved ones. Um, and we're delighted to have um, a presentation from Caring Together, 
who are a charity located in the southeast of England and help carers in that area get the support and advice that they they need um before during after their caring role you know all together um and i know they're based in the east of england and it'd be different all around the country but they are um a network partner of the carers trust who cover the whole of the uk so it's just people that have got real experience um talking they're a bit like us as well um their their staff and volunteers are have lived experience of caring as well and we're going to have um jason join us jason is uh the husband of a stroke survivor and he was literally left holding the baby um when his wife had a stroke five months after giving birth so we're going to have his um, take on on what it is like to to all aspects to to be a carer of a, a loved one who's had a stroke. He's also um, you know a male in in possibly what is classed as a female's world, and you know he had to cope with um raising the baby for the first few months as well while his his wife recovered and um, so it should be a very interesting webinar so once again thank you very much um for coming along today and we will send you out that information as soon as we can get it ready thank you bye everybody